The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX like we always do. As you can see, we had a very nice 61% retracement, a three-drive pattern, and it's also an expanding triangle as long as we don't go busting out to the upside, which on down farm payroll day, anything could happen. And what usually can happen on a Friday and a good month is that we have our friend, Mr. Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Vienna, Austria will be our guest at the half hour. And he has certainly got some great information every time he comes on, and especially uh, this month. So we'll have Bill on in about um, 23 minutes. Uh, as we look at, let's do the next one, I believe, which was the uh, German, uh, the, the FTSE. You see the FTSE's making some ABCDs. Not quite there yet in the FTSE. Let's repost that to make sure we get it, and we'll be able to see uh, what that's looking. Those times are right at the bottom of the chart. Those are in Eastern time. You should be able to see it. If you can have a little uh, clock on your old desk or something, you'll be able to see those times without. Remember, that could either be a high or a low. We don't know, but that's what it's scheduled to be. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what's going to happen here. Folks, the one that's really important today, it's not showing there? Shut the front door and raise the rent. Just a minute, let me get this up here. You know what I'll do is I will just redo it. Give me one second. Uh, by the way, I wanted to uh, also mention that the really key one to look at today, of course, is that uh, those bonds, you know, we were looking at that number at 147.06. They've already, they've already rallied $500, you know, off of the bottom. That's such a big number down there, boys and girls. I mean, that's just... Uh, that, that that's just really a huge number. So keep an eye on those bonds. Now, if they go much below that, that will certainly be a lot different. Let's get this up here. So this should be able to bring it up. Everybody should be happy now. Get this up here so we can see it and then move on and talk about the things that uh, that look important. Key times today are 1015 and again at 1145 and then right before, uh, you know, right before uh, tw uh, 1 o'clock. So those are the things that we're kind of keeping an eye on here in the stock market this morning. But the bonds are the real key, folks. We've been talking about these all week. They got down to our level. We were looking at 147.06. They got to 147.02, now trading at 147.20. And we'll be able to see if that's going to be the case or not, uh, if it's going to you know, react to those levels. Um, uh, those of you that trade the metals, we've had a tremendous swings last night in platinum. They had a $60 swing. It, it went from 906 down to 890, 890 up to 913, 913 down to 900, 900 up to 913, and then 913 down to 906. And the key level to watch here is 914 because that's a 50% retracement on the weekly chart, and it's a 1.618 expansion. So uh, it's really wild wild over there. Folks, when you're trading the metals, let's go over some things that I think are important because you think that they all trade the same and they really don't. The open interest in the gold runs about 400. Th these are approximate because I, I, I know what they are approximately. I don't know the exact numbers, but the open interest in gold is roughly 400,000 contracts. The open interest in silver is half that, roughly $200,000 200, contracts. Platinum, the open interest in platinum is around 70000 And the open interest in palladium is around 25000 So you see palladium is only 5% of the open interest that we have in, in the gold. That means that it takes very little to move palladium, and that's why it has tremendous swings. I want to bring to your attention here the palladium because something's very important happened in palladium yesterday. I want to bring it to your attention. Here's what we were looking at. You know, we were watching this weekly chart up there at that uh, 1.618 expansion at 115.60. Uh, but let's take a look at what, what happened yesterday because this was one of the things that we talked about because I think this is what we'll be seeing 
in the um, in the in the, uh, the 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 bond market very very shortly. That's what my assumption is. Now, if I can just find that new chart that I have for uh, the palladium, I'll be in good shape. But right by golly, I don't see it right now. Let's just see if I can. Nope, I can't get it. But anyway, if you'll look at that, let me. Where is that thing? I know I have it in here because it was that important. <laughs> Shut the front door and raise it in. It's disappeared on me, so I'm not going to worry about it. Anyway, look at that. Look at that palladium chart, folks. You notice that we went down and then we rallied back. That rally back yesterday's high was an exact 382 retracement. Now, if this and it's already taken out the low of the previous day, so that that's a really big sign that palladium has most probably made a significant top in here. I have never traded. Palladium, I don't intend to, but the chart pattern is what's important because I think we're going to see repetition of that in the Treasury bonds over the next three or four days. So let's watch that very, very closely. I think it's important. Now, remember, uh, today, folks, is the uh, day where we're watching the uh, the silver uh, very, very closely. If you remember, we were talking about silver potentially, and this is just simple technical, uh, uh, yeah, no, I didn't get out of it. I, I never got out of the bonds. I just said it made the first profit objective. I didn't. I didn't buy them down there to, to just make 500 bucks. Good for you. Well, that, that's hey, 500 bucks. You know that ain't chicken feed. You know even if you're a chicken, that ain't chicken feed. Here's a look at silver, folks. Here we are, 11 days down today. So we should be making a slightly lower low in the silver. I don't know if we broke that uh, 14 to 95 level or not. I haven't been able to see the bottom yet, but. Uh, that's what we're looking for in silver. It should have stopped right around that 1490 level at the very low, at the very lowest level, and we should start a little bit of a rally in here. And whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. But uh, that's what we're watching here in silver. And remember, all we're looking at here is from the high on the 19th of February to the low to the February of March. That's down 11 trading days, and 11 trading days down from that 61% retracement brings you into today, and that's where you get time and price coming together, and that's what you try to look at when you're watching some of these things. They don't always uh, work that way, but that's just the way it is. Uh, let me see. Terry's asking the relationship between palladium and platinum. They have the same applications. I don't know about that, Terry. All I know is the open interest in the palladium is, uh, you know, one uh, one third of what it is in the, in the platinum. So I, if you have to trade anything, I would certainly think that the the platinum would be the the better thing to trade. That's a key number up there at uh, nine nine fourteen uh, in the in the platinum. So whether that's going to be up and see. No, no, uh, Maria, my computer is uh, is gone. It's gone to that old uh, graveyard out here in the desert. It uh, it's six years old, and it's one of these really fancy uh, high-speed uh, computers, and it's got special stuff in it to run the artificial intelligence. And today, I have to uh, go up to uh, Phoenix to Fry's Electronics and uh, test out. I've got to hire a guy to come up there and make sure because I don't know diddly squat about these things. And, you know, they could they could sell me a Maserati for the price of a Volkswagen. I wouldn't know any difference, but it's going to be uh, quite a few quite a few bucks. But that's OK. It'll be fun. Anyway, you folks stay with me. We'll be right back. And in eight, uh, 12 more minutes, 15 more minutes, we're going to have Bill, Ceru Bill Meridian on 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the Treasury bonds, the one hour. This is the one I've been posting since Monday. Uh, the reason why we were looking for that area of 147.06 to 147.04 was the fact that that was, uh, you know, we're right at a 1.618 expansion, you know, right at a 50% retracement of the last major low that we had. We were eight days down, and then we had the non-farm payroll report. And uh, whether that was going to be a low or not, we don't know, but it's had a little bit of a bounce from there, and that's all it is. It's just a little bounce so far, but we don't know what's going to happen next, but nobody else does either. The key to watch here, folks, is the fact that the euro is at that really low level again, right near that 112 and change level. And any time we get below 111.65, I don't expect that to happen today, and maybe it won't. But if we do get below that, that means the U.S. dollar is going to start to increase, and that'll put some dampening on some of the other things that are out there, and it'll possibly be a bigger change in interest rates. So we'll see whether these happen or not. Uh, being a Friday and an up month, as you remember uh, what we talked about on Monday, the Bill Meridian's uh, stuff was showing that uh, from March 15th to April 15th had about a – uh, 16 out of the last 17 times that we had a situation like that. It closed higher, and it's certainly been doing that. So uh, he'll be talking to us uh, about that when he comes on here in about uh, 10 minutes. So we'll watch that very, very closely, of course. Now, the other one that I think is important is the fact that when, when we're looking at the stock market up here, we do have some resistance at, at these new highs at uh, 2898 is the area to 20, uh, 2902 is really a key level in that S&P. If we got up there, I'd have to I'd have to nibble at the short side there because uh, there's a whole bunch of key numbers coming in at that point, and it looks like it would be an area where you would have some really interesting spots to uh, at least take a, a pretty good look at it. I want to share with you something that we talked about uh, last week. One of our folks brought brought us to attention this morning on the on email, but look what's happened to uh, the cocoa folks. Uh, at that 61% retracement at that 2140, we, we, we highlighted that because it must hold. The low during that move was uh, was 2128. That was $120 lower on a contract that's worth well over $24,000. And look at this thing go. 
Uh, we've rallied over $3,000 in the last two weeks in the cocoa. Now we had the three drive, or excuse me, the one three five pattern. You know that yielded a profit of uh, almost two thousand dollars. We came down, tested that sixty one percent retracement again in that one twenty uh, twenty one fifty level, and now it's off to the races. And with the ABCD structure on cocoa here, you know we could easily see it at one twenty uh, one twenty six forty up another two hundred points without any trouble at all. So. Uh, and I'm not even involved in this. I just happen to be doing the chart for uh, Simon Lee's group and also for Rich Anderson. But, uh, you know, that's actually pretty good. Uh, the coffee is still acting okay. It's uh, down about a point or so the last I checked from the high that it made. It's still three points higher than, you know, where we were looking to buy it. So if you're in the coffee, keep your stop at break even and don't watch it. You know, just don't watch it, especially on your monitor, folks. That monitor is not your friend. I know it's telling you exactly how much you're making and, you know, you're, uh, you know, calculating all this stuff, but it really, that's what really gets you in trouble with, uh, uh, with trading is because it's not about money. Just, just don't, don't think about the money. Think about what the chart is doing and do the right thing. And you'll be, you'll be far, uh, you know, far better off. <laughs> Yesterday, uh, we had a lovely lunch with some very, very dear friends. And we were chatting about some of the old days, and I don't want to go into some of them, but uh, one of the fun things uh, that happened many, many years ago is uh, Mark Douglas came out uh, with Paula to uh, to visit me, and he wanted to go to the racetrack. Paula didn't want to go, so Mark and I went. This was a several years after I had left Drexel, but uh, you know they still thought that I was the Drexel box holder, which was really quite funny. But we, uh, we sat there, and we had a uh, really interesting uh, chat there. We were sitting there, uh, Mark Douglas and I, and uh, while while we were sitting there, uh, Tim Conway came up uh, to say hello, and he was there with uh, uh, Don Adams, you know, from Get Smart, and they started chatting, and Mark had the most amazing afternoon. They were with us about two hours, and all they did was kibitz back and forth, and it was it was really hilarious. I mean, it was really quite good. I appreciate all the comments you folks are giving me about the computer, but believe me, I have a a very very good specialist here in uh, in here in Tucson. He's a young man named Kenny who has the skinny. He is really pretty smart with computers. He's bailed me out many many times. Uh, he came over and looked at what was happening. And six years old, and basically the uh, the two little uh, fans that were on it uh, died, and it, it caused the thing to overheat. But it's okay. It was due for a it was due for a new one, so we'll pay uh, pretty close attention to that. So, anyway, let's move on to a couple other of these things here. And uh, uh, to the main things, folks, are the, the key ones today, are, of course, the bonds, and then watch the euro and the dollar index. That dollar index needs to get about 97.50 for a breakout. We're trading right about. Uh, 96.90 or something like that right now. So that's another one that looks interesting. Uh, we should have a bounce here uh, in the silver, and also the gold should be bouncing a little bit. But here again, you know, it's still early in the day, and uh, we have lower prices, you know, for the gold, which should come in right around the uh, the 1255 uh, to 1260 level. And if we get to that level, then I would think, you know, that would be where you would want to reverse the short and actually uh, go long. But the key one for today, uh, we thought was going to be the bonds. I don't know if it's going to continue that way, but at least it started in the right direction. Uh, regarding the platinum, folks, uh, we if we this is the uh, hold. Let me get this up here so you can see what happened to platinum on the weekly basis. It's trading above this level right now. Uh, it's quite a bit, so we'll see uh, what's going on here. Uh, oh, Mr. Uh, David uh, White posted some great stuff from uh, our friend uh, uh, Paul Tudor Jones. Well, uh, he's not a friend, but he's an acquaintance. I've met him a couple times. But uh, his his rules are lose your opinion instead of your money. Don't ever average losers. That's my number one thing on my painting behind me here. It's never add to a losing position. Never, never trade in in situations where you don't have control, mind says, when in doubt, get out. If you have a position that you're uncomfortable with in every way and you're, you're, and you're uncomfortable about it, get out, which you should do. Uh, don't be concerned about where you get into a position. Be concerned on where you get out of the position. That's the thing that you have to focus on. 
he played the great defense because you know all great sporting events even golfers or whatever it's the defense and that's what uh, you look at and always he's saying assume every day your position is wrong that means you're monitoring your losses and the other thing is uh, don't have an ego you know <laughs> always question yourself and your ability which uh, is really easy uh, in in my case, because I'm wrong a lot, I'm occasionally right, but you have to be focusing on how much you're losing, not how much you're winning. Because uh, usually people that are new to trading, the big problem that they make is they keep focusing, you know, on the uh, on the winners, and that's the thing that you want to do is keep protecting yourself. Because the most important cycle in all of trading, folks, is that nine inch cycle, the one from your left ear to your right ear. If you get that cycle right, boys and girls. It's all over but the shouting. So we're going to have uh, Bill Meridian on in about four minutes, so stay with us. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, I'm back, folks, and I hope we have uh, Bill Meridian on the line. Bill, are you there? Hi, Larry. How are you, my friend? Fine. Hey, we're ready to go. Uh, I've already ran through the things with the YouTube and the, what was going on. Do you want to start out with the uh, with the stock market and uh, the you know chart number or slide number four, or did you want to do the uh, YouTube? You just tell me what to do. Well, I'll just go to number two. 
Okay, that sounds great. We'll and put it up. I have two two YouTube channels. One is Planetary Stock Trading. Another is Mastering Geopolitical Prediction. And now we'll jump down to number three. Today, stocks moving higher. Bonds likely bottom today, and I think they're moving higher. And gold, I think the low is in the third week of the month. So if okay. we can move to number four. Okay, get her up here. This is the EOM is the end of the month effect, which was discovered by my old friend Arthur Merrill in his book, Behavior of Prices on Wall Street in the 1960s. He used the mean month in the calculations. In other words, between about the 26th, 27th of the old month and about the third of the new month, there was a bullish bias. But in 2004, I used the individual months. In other words, December into January, uh, December into January, January into February, and so on, which greatly improved the results. But um, I just updated it. I did that study in 2004, and I updated it a few days ago. So now it runs 1915 through 2018. And I find that the bullish effect in March, actually, it was, it used to be March 30th to April 5th, but it's changed over 14 years. It's now March 30th through to April 16th. That period has been up 66.3% of the time for an average gain of 1.3%, and that's an uh, annualized gain of 176 which is actually the 11th lowest of the 12 months. So it's uh, wow. March into April is not uh, not a strong one, but I'll show you now. I wanted to make this point. I always mean to do this, and I forget. This is the Astro Advantage, the Astro Edge. Those numbers are all based on the calendar you get a calendar you get on the calendar dates and that is derived from the relative position of the earth and the sun that's where it comes from so why not uh -huh. use, like, why not use other cycles why not use other planets so here you see the 1.6 mars cycle and you see mars and aries mars and taurus mars and, and look at that as mars enters gemini the dow jones has tended to bottom this is prices from 1885 through 2018 and when it hits zero Libra <coughs> up there, that's the top of the cycle. So Mars just entered Gemini in the last few days. So that is the edge you have when you look at these planets. There's an added degree of certainty that this end of the month period will be up. It is the 11th strongest of the 12, but this 1.6 year cycle bottom greatly increases your odds. And let's wow. look at one more cycle. We go down now to number six. And this is the lunation cycle. That is a full moon you see in the begin in the uh, middle of the chart and the new moon at the end of the chart. And note where the low is. The note is right just before the new moon. By the way, this graph hasn't changed at all since I first ran this on the old Astro Analyst in 1986 in my office in Payne Weber in New York. It's still the same. Wow. We, we, we are in that period right now. In other words, this low that you see just prior to new moon, this was a couple days ago. So now we have two reasons to think that the uh, that this period is going to be up and let me throw in a third which I don't show but the moon through the signs from 1885 through 86 and from 1885 right up to the present the, the Dow Jones has tended to bottom when the moon is in Taurus and top when the moon is in Scorpio which you would expect because traditional astrology would say those are money signs well it enters Taurus over the weekend so now you have oh. three reasons to, to, uh, to bet heavily, which I've already done, on this EOM period, even though, if you just look at the plain numbers, this period ranks 11 of the 12 months. So that's the reason that I use these things. Wow. So if we could go down one more, I'll show you why I think. Uh, this just went out on Forbes, and um, on, um, uh, I forgot the name, uh, Twitter. From 1885, pre-election Aprils have been up 70% of the time for an average 2.07% gain. This latter figure is the highest monthly figure in all pre-election years. In other words, April is the single strongest month in pre-election years going back to 1885. Since World War II, the S&P 500 has started April with a, when it started with a 1% gain, it's done it nine times. The rest of the month has been positive all nine times. It started with a very strong day on, on Monday, April 1st. Also, there has not been a down April since 2005, and April has been the single best month over the last 30 years. So what's not to like here? And technically, you can confirm this by going one more slide down. Breadth is at a new high. You can see that's the advanced decline line. And um, if you go down one more, there's the S&P. It's almost at a new high. Well, the S&P is going to follow... Uh, the breadth line, and the only big change I notice is that it is the large cap stocks 
that have been carrying the market up here. The uh, smaller cap stocks have been lagging a bit. So wow. that's how uh, the S&P looks, and that's the reason for me being bullish right now and bullish for the month of April. And uh, here you have, uh, next we have bonds. And let me summarize this by saying there were three very weak periods in bonds. One is in September, one's in March, and one's in December, about the third week in each month. Uh, the week from March 16th to 23 has seasonally been very weak. This was only the eighth time since 1982 that it's been up. And the same thing December 18th through 25. It's been, in other words, it's been up uh, about, uh, well, since 1982, that's 18, that's about 37, 38 years. It's been up 30 times and down only eight. And uh, yet it was up in both periods. So if it's up, in those weak periods, I only have eight cases to go on from which I can't make any sort of a reasonable projection. But just logically speaking, two very weak periods seasonally and bonds went up in both of them. So that can only be read as bullish. The wow. uh, seasonal patterns were completely overridden. And uh, there were high probability PTP is a projected turning point, something I learned from George Lindsay. This is just day counts from past highs and lows and Fibonacci expansions. They were on the 1st and on the 5th. Well, the 5th is today. And if notes have been trending lower, then today we should have a low. And uh, there's a weekly cycle top on the 14th, and the next projected turning point is on the 18th. So we can count on, I think, from the 5th through either the 14th or the 18th, uh, there will be a higher 10-year note prices. The PTP is a better indicator because the high day of the high day, because PTPs are crisper and they are less diffuse than our cycle tops. And so Bill, let's. This yeah. is some of the most interesting things that you've ever uh, that you've ever brought to us. I mean, it, it just lays out such a beautiful uh, scenario statistically. I I didn't want to interrupt you, but I'm just uh, my my jaw is open here. It's so so cool. So oh. keep going. Sorry. It's great when it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't take the losing trades. I learned that somewhere. Go yeah. ahead, Bill. Other than that, it's interesting. Now, <laughs> gold in April, uh, the cl current decline is likely to accelerate in the weekly graph, uh, which I didn't show. But if you look at a weekly bar graph, it was a hook sell. It went to a new high for the week and then closed at a new low below that of the prior week. That mm -hmm. is a hook sell signal. It's a bearish development. Price is likely to bottom at either 1274 or 1254 between the 23rd and the 30th. Hey, we got to pay a few bills. Can you stay with us, uh, Bill, for of another course, segment? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Hey, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, you want to continue on? I've got your uh, upcoming 12. stock trades. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, I usually forget to present this, but every month, uh, this comes directly from my book, Planetary Stock Trading, now in its fourth edition. This is the earning surprise method. This is where you take the transits where they are now and you cast a chart for the day the company reports earnings and put those around the first trade chart, which is the date it was first listed, actually. And uh, those are my picks for this month. And I decided to go into a little bit of detail. Bed Bath & Beyond is already, I was up 3.8% yesterday, I think. And uh, here you see the listing. So let's look at some of these in detail. The first one is IBM. And in the outer ring, you see the transits where they will be April 16th when IBM reports earnings. And you'll notice 22 Capricorn 36 is the midheaven, which is your reputation, your career. It is very, very sensitive at earnings reporting time, which I found out when I was back at Value Line in the 70s, and I really developed this a lot at Payne Weber in the 80s and then at Adia in the 90s. But you'll notice Saturn and Pluto transiting are right on the midheaven. That cannot be interpreted as, as a positive outlook or a positive return. It just crunched one stock in March when it did this to the progressive midheaven. So that's the reason I think that IBM is likely to report a negative earnings surprise and why the stock, I think, will drop on April 16th. And you have to check. I forget whether they report before or after the opening. I don't recall. And now let's go down one more to see Citigroup. The Jupiter station. Now, this month, why I have so many stock picks for this month, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto all go stationary, which for those who don't know, just means they're extremely powerful. Jupiter is considered bullish, and Saturn and Pluto usually bearish if they're in the right angle. And so the Jupiter station, which is around 23 Sagittarius, will be exactly trying the Citigroup Midheaven at 23 Leo when they report earnings on April 15th. So I think that stock will likely rally. It's as though this were your chart, and I'd say Larry's going to make an announcement, and we try and figure out what Larry's going to say. Well, Jupiter trying the Midheaven, it's something positive that we'll all like. Now, let's go down to Google. Now, this is the progressed chart uh, that you're looking at. And you'll note that the midheaven is 20 degrees uh, Cancer. And the Pluto station is at uh, 20 Capricorn. So it will be directly opposite that. If you don't believe me, look at the last uh, earnings report in uh, January. Because this chart doesn't change that much. The stock got clobbered. And it will likely do that again when it reports, which it does... Uh, alphabet is on the 22nd. Oh. And this is now Apple Computer. Now, this is the converse progress chart. You can progress charts direct and converse for those who are into planets. Mm -hmm. Jupiter is making its station at uh, 23 Sagittarius. It's right on the ascendant. If it's mm -hmm. at, The angles are extremely sensitive. So I imagine Apple's earnings mm -hmm. report, which will come out on... I don't have it listed here. Isn't that amazing? I, I forgot to leave it. I forgot to put it on the list. 
uh, whenever Apple's reporting, it will uh, likely be a very positive response. And then I mentioned uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, which is triple B Y. The Jupiter station will be trying the midheaven. You see 24 Aries, 35, and Mars at 23 Aries. That's not the only positive thing happening. I uh, just limited it to one observation to try and uh, keep this short. So didn't put them all in here, but um, uh, Netflix, PayPal is an overall uptrend. If you short that, you've got to close the short after one day, which I caught that 3.8% decline in January. Um, but PayPal is one of the riskier ones because you'd be shorting a stock in an uptrend. And uh, Amazon's chart is uh, very afflicted uh, by the Saturn and Pluto also. So what you do is you get sort of shot down for a few days, and then it starts to rally back again. Of course, I found this out when I was in Abu Dhabi, and if this, if Pluto and Saturn are moving very slowly, then how often do they report earnings? Four times in a year. Each time they report, because the planets are so slow, you have an afflicted chart. And so it rallies, gets clobbered, rallies, gets clobbered. It does that four times. At the end of the year, you're where you were at the beginning of the year. So those stocks are used to underweight, of course. So those are the planetary stock trading picks for the month of April. Bill, I have a question. Is this the type of stuff that you did when you were working in Saudi Arabia all those years? Abu Dhabi. Is that what, well, yeah, well, I understand uh, Abu Dhabi, yeah. But did, is, this is the type of stuff you were doing for those folks, wasn't it? Well, I went there to do something else, and at the end of year two, close to the end of 91, they called me in and said, we noticed you've developed software. You do all, all your own work on the PC. You p appear to be pretty knowledgeable. The stocks you've been buying in your little $50 million portfolio, mostly technology, and the, the guys who were doing technology both are leaving. Would you take that sector of the portfolio, which is about $460 million? And I said, uh, yeah, okay, but it was sort of like the beginning of the end. That put me under a senior fund manager who does not only believe in cycles. When he was a little kid, he did not have a bicycle, I don't think. And there was constant <laughs> conflict between him and me because I was buying and selling, and he wanted to know why. Finally, I started going to the executive director, and I said, Ali, I said, I don't want to run this past this guy. Okay. He says, yeah, you got to sell here. I'll sign it. And then the guy got irritated. And I said, well, look, if you hold me up past the earnings reporting date, we somebody put Lotus, if you remember Lotus, in the, in the portfolio at 20. It ran to 66. They were reporting earnings. The chart was very afflicted. I went to a meeting in New York, and before I could answer the question, the guy next to me said to uh, the guy who ran, uh, I can't remember his name anymore, Lotus, he said, you know, what are you doing? What's your new product? And the guy didn't have a good answer. We looked at each other and said, well, basically, that means that's it. I mean, they don't have anything new. And their sales have peaked. Went home, sold the stock, and the stock uh, went from 66 down back to the low 20s. Wow. And that's in my that's in my book, Planetary Stock Trading Four. Parametric ran from seven to thirty-five. Sold it because it was afflicted. It opened up down fourteen points on their earnings and didn't stop until it went all the way back to seven. And it took years to recover. If you look at PMTC in any monthly chart, you'll see that back in the nineties. So uh, yeah, I was using this, but you know, it was only when the earnings are reported. And that's when you know, Matt, you have a meeting, and you know, how do you think Apple's going to do when they report? I was using this to give me an edge. Well, do, do you have any? Uh, we have one of our listeners is asking if you have further comments about Netflix. Anything that uh, draws your attention to Netflix? I'm sorry, I didn't to keep the the uh, presentation. You know, within the 30 minutes, I didn't include okay. the details. I but understand. let's just okay. say it's afflicted at the time, which means it's probably going to drop. But I don't think uh, I don't think the uptrend is over. I just think you're going to get a very bearish uh, couple of uh, maybe a week or so. Okay, that makes very good sense. Uh, how how uh, we're talking about your master geopolitical prediction uh, book that you have here? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I've got. Uh, we've got what 11 minutes left. You got – yeah, we – don't worry about that. We've got a break okay. coming up here in just a minute. Yeah, well, I, then, I wanted to just – I wanted to uh, – well, <laughs> the book is uh, about mundane astrology, which is the astrology of countries, leaders, uh, business, politics. And I, I use a number of methods. Almost all except one were developed by other people, but I pulled them all together in this one book because I've been writing the mundane column for Dell Horoscope since 1990. Uh -huh. And I have to write them six months in advance, uh, one, one every month. And uh, I started 
I hear the music. Yeah, why don't you wait? When we come back, we'll finish sure. up. I want to we'll finish up with Donald this. Trump. You betcha. Thank you very much. Bill Meridian, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back with Bill Meridian, and he's going to be talking to us about El Presidente. Is that correct, Bill? Yeah, well, I had said, if you remember, that um, I said not only would he not be indicted, I have a YouTube video explaining that, uh, but in fact, March was one of the most favorable months uh, imaginable because he had a number of very favorable secondary progressions becoming exact. Now, secondaries build in strength over six months or a year, depending on how slow they are. Then they hit a peak, and then they start to – and look, look what happened in March. The Mueller report came out. It's a dud, and his opponent there, Michael Avenatti, looks like uh, he's going to do anything he can do to stay out of prison. So it was a very favorable month. And – the rest, of, you know, this will still, like the afterglow, will follow him. And I look forward, you know, he's got Jupiter opposite his sun, Jupiter 135 degrees to his midheaven, Jupiter opposite Uranus. All these are favorable. Jupiter's on his moon through October, which increases his popularity. The only difficult month I see is July, when there's a solar eclipse. And I think he's, he'll conclude a favorable trade treaty with the Chinese, but also encounter a lot of... Uh, of, uh, he'll, he'll be in a real fighting mood and very argumentative and sharp-tongued with his uh, opponents. So he'll, he'll be in a fighting stance through July, repelling attacks. 
But August and um, October, I'm interested to see what happens. He has a progressed sun to Uranus and a progressed new moon. A progressed new moon means some sort of a basic shift. So I think he's going to shift his strategies between August and October. And this is going to throw the Democrats off because he, he's going to be gearing up with some new strategy for the election. So I think that will come as quite a surprise to his opponents. That's great. Bill, how would the folks reach you if they'd like to purchase your book and uh you know, get some more well, information you can, from you. It's either the email is bill at cyclesresearch.com or the website is billmeridian.com. And if they'd like a copy of this presentation, just email me and just put LP show, Larry Pesavento show in the headline and I'll send you a copy of this PowerPoint. <laughs> bill, okay, thank I'll, you very much, I'll my friend. I really enjoyed it. Soon. And everybody did too, my friend. Okay, Larry. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. You bet, buddy. Bye-bye.